I can say it if you want. I don't know. It's your choice, though. I would hate to make my opinion law. Wait, that's the lesson today. Good job. How many of you have ever tried to do something and you were getting ready and you just could not figure out how to start something? I came in this morning. I had no idea how to start this sermon. So then God did something amazing, didn't he? How many of y'all know that I have not talked to Brian about anything? Brian did something. He did something unusual. Thank you, Lord. He is a good Lord. Amen? Because the point of today's lesson is nobody wins. If we can go to... I don't have a clicker. Nobody wins. It's about opinions. And you heard him start with the one who eats and the one who doesn't eat. And the problem was they were going to the market. And in the market, most of the meat was, you know, the leftovers from the temple. Because all these different religions in Rome came together and they all sacrificed animals. Everybody had their own sacrifices. Some would get underneath the blood and pour a bull on their head. We got a full bull then. What do you do with the meat? Well, the priests eat their fill and then they're getting a little bit sick. What do they do? Send it to market, sell it. So what happened is you have people here who are divided. And they have this opinion and some say, well, because this meat was sacrificed at this temple, I can't eat it. And then you have another who says, well, that what is sacrificed is nothing. It doesn't matter. I, I, I'm just eating meat. I'm going to go eat some meat. And because it was in the market, you couldn't go, well, where was this meat come from? They're like, well, we got the meat somewhere. It didn't have one of those made in the USA labels that we like so much. It had one of those, here's meat. Well, it looks like meat with no directions where it came from. So what happened was you had people judging one another and condemning one another. And God proposes something completely different. That in this situation, nobody wins. Romans chapter 14, starting in verse 5. One person regards one day above another. Another regards every day alike. Each person must be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day, observes it for the Lord. He who eats, does so for the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who eats not for the Lord, he does not eat and give thanks to the God. For not one of us lives for himself. And not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. It presents to us that we don't live for ourselves. We don't die for ourselves. It's not about us and every little opinion. I was always taught, you know, in training, there was this concept that if you have a hammer, right? then everything looks like a nail. You come up to a screw and you're like, I could get that in with a hammer. You know, you come up to, I mean, I know some of y'all have heard this term. When you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So, so you take your book out, obviously not the Bible. We're talking about opinions today. The book of opinions. I call it commentary. They call it book of opinions, whatever you like. Commentary, book of opinions. So what we do is we've got this book of opinions, right? And what do we do? We think it's a hammer. Right. And we go, I've got my opinions I'm going to beat you down with. And in this context, it specifically says about opinions. It's talking about eating and not eating things God doesn't speak of. It's talking about whether you observe days or not. Now, I don't know how many places I've been where I've seen this exact thing. People fight over what? Days. I went into a place and I don't know, I mentioned the word Easter. Somebody goes, do you know the origin is Easter, as in the Easter religion, the goddess, and da 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 And I was like, whew, you read a lot of books, don't you? It's not in my books. I didn't know it. And I come into Christmas, and you know what they told me? You know that's a pagan holiday that was created by the Romans to take place at the winter solstice. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of books. And you know where I didn't find anything about if you want to celebrate Christmas on the 25th, if you want to celebrate Easter sometime around Passover? in the Bible. It never said anything about any of that, but yet we've taken this book of opinions and we thought it was a hammer. 
So we looked around and we saw a lot of nails. And it became this passage always used to say that the weaker brother wins. And the answer is nobody wins. I've never heard this used except to say that whatever the weaker brother thinks they get. And that is the only way it's ever been presented to me. But in verse 10, it talks about peace. About not just building up, but peace. Romans chapter 14, starting in verse 10. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each one of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather determine this. Not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way. It's not about winning, is it? Because, because in that, what is the one thing that you should draw out? As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. And it's really easy for all these opinions to get in the way. It's really easy for me to have an opinion that's so strong that I disagree with you and we just can't work together enough to do what? To praise God. For as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. But I will determine not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in my brother's way. What if that's how we really treated it? We said the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is what we go back to. The Bible is our standard. The Bible's what we do. But instead we get opinions and our opinions become our traditions, our traditions become our laws and our laws advance themselves to become commandments three songs of prayer i don't even know there were two songs there's a prayer then there's a song there's uh the lord's supper and then there's i think another song and then another song and then there's a scripture reading and you can't say more than just the scripture reading we know that one um and then you get to the sermon you know what those are Traditions. It's an opinion. It works pretty good, so we have an opinion. But the problem is not that these opinions exist, because you're going to have to have an opinion. You have to have an opinion in some areas. If you're going out to the market, right, and you know that some of the meat was offered to an idol, but you don't know which ones, you get a guess. You have to make up an opinion. You do. You have to say, well, you know, because it was, I don't feel comfortable, I'm not going to eat it. Or you can take the position, well, I mean, those gods are nothing. It's just they killed an animal for no good reason. I'm going to eat it. At least I'm going to get some use out of it. But no matter what, we came to an opinion. And everybody's going to have an opinion. And that is not what is negative. It is only negative when it becomes an obstacle and a stumbling block. When our traditions become so strong that peace cannot exist because if we're fighting each other look at your neighbor just a second and pretend look at them and you're going to realize something if i'm looking at my neighbor who am i thinking about if i'm looking at my neighbor who am i thinking about my neighbor and if i've got this ooh tension going on i used to have this great tension at one of the churches that was so awkward there was the right side of the room and the left side. Have you ever heard of farmers and ranchers? They don't get along that well. So you have them on the sides. And I was like, why do you sit over here? And they were like, oh, because, you know, we own, you know, a ranch over here. Well, why do you sit over here? Well, we own a farm over here. I was like, where am I supposed to sit? I'm neither. And the problem was they really did have separate sides. And there was, and I was like, hey, we're going to have an event. Well, that doesn't work for us because we like to go out in the field in the morning at that time. But if you moved it to right here, it'd be okay because then, and the other one go, well, I got to milk the cattle at this time. So you need to switch it. 
And it became, I've got an opinion because I'm a farmer. I've got an opinion because I'm a rancher. And nobody was working towards peace. They weren't looking to build each other up and have peace. They were looking to win. And when two sides fight to win, nobody wins. Starting in verse 14. I know and am convinced in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. But to him who thinks anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. For if because of food your brother is hurt, you are no longer walking according to love. Do not destroy with your food him for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what is for you a good thing be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who in this way serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So much of Christianity is just that. It's about our aim. So much of Christianity is what we're focused on. And, and do not let what's for you a good thing be spoken of evil. Well, he said that with the meat. He said what? He said it's a good thing between you and God because you're giving thanks for it. But he says to the other on the other side, y'all aren't eating meat because you respect the Lord and that's good. So don't let that which is a good thing be spoken of as evil. Both of you are right. You disagree and you're both right. And it no longer becomes who can win? Who gets to win this argument? Who gets the power? Who gets the control? Because he makes it very clear. There is something bigger. Righteousness. Peace. And that word that if you say too loud in church, they think you're having fun. Joy. I know, huh? I was associated joy with a smile, and then I went to church and found out joy was not that. Okay. I know, I, I know. I get it, right? Because we've got these traditions, and the only way that a tradition becomes a problem is when something good becomes spoken of as evil. When something holy is prohibited. I, I am really glad that Brian shared that message this morning. That meant a lot to me. I like being preached to, too. I, 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 I retract my statement. I like being preached to as opposed to y'all. Okay, much better. Y'all like to sleep. It's good. I enjoy hearing a message like that. And it's nice sometimes to be fed. And one of the beautiful things is the fact that God wants our attention. And God wants us to pay attention to not just the tradition and the rules and the structure, but he wants us to pay attention to him and to work towards one goal, praising him coming together, being one, living at peace, and helping one another, and disagreeing the whole time. I love how it ends. Are you ready? Verse 19, we're going to see how it ends, and you know what? He's going to say disagree. It's beautiful. Verse 19, Romans 14, starting in verse 19. So then, we pursue the things which make for peace, and the building up of one another. Do not tear down the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are clean, but they are evil for the man who eats and gives offense. It is good not to eat meat or to drink wine or to do anything by which your brother stumbles. The faith which you have, have as your own conviction before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith. And whatever is not from faith is... Sin. If you're allowed to talk in church, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. How can they say the amen? That's what he said. The point is, he says right here, it can be wrong for you and right for you. And disagree. 
and disagree. But when it comes to disagreeing, that does not mean fight it out. It simply means disagree. It means that if I come to church and I feel like raising my hands, the person over here shouldn't go, oh, they're trying to make it a show. No, you don't judge the way that I serve God. Now, if I go against the Bible, judge me as quick as you possibly can. We'll go to 1 Corinthians 5. But when it comes to opinions, stop. Say, I have my opinion, you have yours, we're both right. And instead of no one wins in Romans 14, you have everybody wins. Going back to verse 3 to connect it all. The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats, for God has accepted him. One doesn't judge the other, one doesn't condemn the other. You simply say, you have your faith between you and God, and if you think it's wrong, don't do it. And you have your faith between you and God, and if you think it's wrong, don't do it. But if it is something good for you, and you draw closer to God, and God is praised, and God is glorified, and God is moved, don't make it into evil. But in the end, it is all about building up and being at peace. Because opinions are important. It is important that you don't go against your own conscience. It is also important you don't judge somebody else for what's your opinions. And that they don't judge you for your opinions. But in all of this, there is a oneness that is achieved when it's functional. When this is functional, when we're doing what it says, there is a oneness. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. There's only one body. There's only one. And the more we divide, the more we make that one body look like broken pieces. Because it was never intended to be. So what we get in the end is, there's a oneness, and there's one way in. There's one baptism. Having heard the word, having believed that Jesus is Lord, Repenting of your sins, confessing Jesus as Lord, being buried with him in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life so you can be one with him. If there's anybody who needs to respond to that invitation, or if there's anybody who needs prayers, or if there's anybody today who wants to submit to the eldership here, we ask that you come now as we stand and as we sing. Jesus will receive.